Hey all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Taylor and behind me is the Alienware Aurora R5. And this computer is from, oh, wait, one sec. I'm getting a phone call. Hello? 2015, you want your Alienware gaming computer back? Well, that's not gonna happen because it's 2023, which means we're gonna upgrade this Aurora R5 to an RTX 4070 Ti, which means this video is not sponsored and any links that I put in the description are not affiliate links. Was NVIDIA thinking of me when they were considering the top videos to fund on YouTube? I don't know, probably, but they didn't give me a call. So I'm funding this video entirely with my own money. Yes, it does hurt my wallet, but this video is for y'all. I hope you enjoy. Before we get into shoving our 4070 Ti in this computer, we need to understand what currently is in it and how it performs in games. So this computer has a six gen Intel Core i7 6700 non-K processor. It has one stick of 16 gig DDR4 RAM. This is a dual channel motherboard, so we'll kind of get into why a single stick of RAM might be an issue. It has a two terabyte mechanical hard drive installed, but this motherboard has an NVMe slot and there's an NVMe drive installed in there, which has all our games and our OS, so we're not waiting with ridiculously long load times. It has built-in Wi-Fi, and it has a GTX 1080 powered by a 460 watt power supply. Can you imagine a flagship NVIDIA GPU today being powered by a 460 watt power supply? Yeah, those days are long gone. Let's go ahead and jump into some games and see how this R5 performs. The first game I'm going to try out is CSGO, and I have all my settings set to high, 1440p. I'm just going to do those settings for all the games that we test, and I'm in a deathmatch server here, which means there's quite a bit of stuff going on. I have the stats down here because my regular overlay doesn't support CSGO, but you can see the frames here. So there's a lot going on, and we're getting around 150 frames per second. For the next game, we're going to try out Diablo 4, and... What's this? Diablo 4 requires Windows 10 version 1909. This computer is on Windows 10 version 1903, and it will not upgrade further than this because the drivers are incompatible. So every time you update past 1903, the system crashes and it reverts to 1903 again. And Diablo 4 requires 1909, so we can't play Diablo 4. Same with Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 2 requires 1904, so just a word of caution if you're planning on playing Diablo 4 or Modern Warfare 2 on this, uh, yeah, it's not gonna work, unfortunately. Now we're in Apex Legends, and again, everything is absolutely maxed out at 1440p. The overlay is working, so you can see what is going on. You can see that we have our one stick of 16 gigs of RAM operating at 2133 mega transfers per second. I have an enemy in front of me and we're getting 78 frames per second. And we're pulling 124 watts on the GPU, which is absolutely insane. Only 40 watts on the CPU. Here we are in Resident Evil 4. This is one of my favorite games of 2023 and I have everything absolutely maxed except for blur. I turned motion blur off, but everything else, max memory, max everything. I turned AMD FX FSR off and there is no NVIDIA DLSS enabled because this GPU doesn't even support DLSS. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into Resident Evil 4 and oh my goodness, it is so dark. But you can see our overlay here, we're getting 42 frames per second and our GPU is pretty hot. It's operating at 84 degrees Celsius and it's chugging along at 99% only consuming 100, about 120 watts of power and 42 watts on the CPU. And we're getting between 30 and 50 frames per second, it looks like with Resident Evil 4. We have to conclude our benchmarking with Night City jumping into Cyberpunk 2077 with the GTX 1080. Again, everything's set to the absolute maximum, no DLSS, no ray tracing, this graphics card doesn't even support it. 1440p, we're driving around Night City in our i7-6700 and our GTX 1080, and we're getting 19, 18 frames per second, absolutely maxed. Our GPU hit 125 watts, which 
I think is the most we've ever seen this GPU hit so far. Our CPU isn't consuming that much power. It looks like we got up to 43 watts there. And this experience is definitely something that is going to be problematic for gameplay because gaming at 20 frames per second in this game and trying to drive and avoid cars is just a challenge. It is very challenging and this CPU GPU combo is just barely holding on. I'm pretty sure if you drop down the settings, you could get more stable frames per second. But with these settings in this configuration, whoo. Yeah, you're going to be jumping between 15 and 19 frames per second. Now that we've seen what that 1080 can do, are you all ready to take this up to the next level and try out the 4070 Ti? I'm ready. I'm excited to see what happens. Let's go ahead and get this thing upgraded. Hi, I just wanted to step in here real quick and you see that? That's the 460 watt power supply. So I'm gonna be putting the 4070 Ti in there which consumes way more than 460 watts of power. So I had to go and I had to find this guy which is an 850 watt power supply that is from another Aurora later model, but it's 850 watts, it is a Dell power supply and it should have all the cables that we need included to attach the 4070 Ti. So just gonna go ahead and throw this in there real quick. Okay, that was a bit of a process, not gonna lie. I was kind of afraid it wasn't gonna fit, but I was able to get this snap shield in there so that it supports it. I had to go from the top first and then down, but it is in there and it looks like it fits. I removed some of the cables because I just didn't need them like the SATA and the um, extra PCI since this power supply does support SLI. I just put those out and put in the ones that I actually did need. Yeah, that is pretty disgusting. Now I'm gonna be installing the RAM, and like I said, this computer came with one single stick of DDR4 RAM. Since this is a dual channel motherboard, you really want two sticks of RAM in order to take advantage of the full performance. So I'm gonna be sticking in these Vengeant Pros RGBs, which are DDR4 modules inside this system here. Oh no. So um, that's not gonna fit at all. I have a solve for this, which is this PCIe extender cable. It has a PCI connector on one side, and then this connects inside the PCI connector in your motherboard. Here's the setup. I got it connected via that PCI connector. And then on the other side, the power cable is connected and it did click, so it should be good. I have this very precariously on a box here so that it kind of just doesn't wobble around and stays kind of flat, doesn't put so much pressure on those cables that are there. So let's go ahead and get everything connected and uh, see if this thing works. Okay, here we are, moment of truth, going to power it on. And this is gonna be the first power on. I don't know if I'm comfortable standing this close, but uh, we're gonna see what happens. Here we go, three, two, one. We got fans spinning. Are we gonna get a video signal? That's good. Oh, the amount of system RAM has changed. If you do not strike the F1 key to continue. It's booting, it's booting. We're at the Windows desktop. 
Okay, we don't care about network adapters. We care about... <gasps> there it is! Oh my god, it recognizes it! A 4070 Ti inside an Aurora R5 in the most ridiculous way possible. <laughs> we did it. I actually want to see if... Let's go to um, Task Manager and let's see what our RAM is running at. 2133. Okay, so it is the same speed as before, but now we're dual channel. Okay, should I go ahead and benchmark this thing with games? Oh yes. Oh yes, we're going to benchmark this. Let's go. All right, we're back inside at Counter-Strike Global Offensive and all the settings are high, 1440p. It really doesn't look like we gained that much frames per second, to be honest. Like we're still running at I guess we're getting over 200 frames per second, so maybe we gained like 30 frames per second. But uh, a little less than I was anticipating. <laughs> maybe that's because we're doing it over the extender cable. But I mean, yeah, we're, we're running with the 4070 Ti. And honestly, we're probably severely CPU bottlenecked. Um, let's go ahead and try another game. All right, we're back in Apex Legends and we have our overlay up. Our GTX 4070 Ti is being recognized. And look at that, 125. We're getting like double the frames per second. Oh, I don't have a parachute, but I didn't take fall damage surprisingly. We're getting about double the frames per second here on this 4070 Ti compared to the 1080. That is pretty crazy. So this is one of the games that is not going to be CPU limited because this is a much more playable experience and we're pulling 140 watts on 50 watts on the cpu maybe we could have stuck with our 460 watt power supply but probably not because it has a six pin and this 4070 requires two eight pins so we did have to switch the power supply but yeah this is much more playable now all high settings 1440p this is way more of an upgrade and uh, so yeah, if you want to play Apex Legends, then just upgrade your R5 to a 4070 Ti. And we're back with Resident Evil 4. And everything is absolutely cranked. And we're getting 66, 90 frames per second. Let's see what we get here. On a cutscene. 80, 90. All right, let's go ahead and get into combat and see what happens. It is way smoother already. You can tell that it is so much smoother. I feel like the 1% uh, lows that we're getting are much more bearable now that we have that 4070. It's just like the maximum frames per second. We are limited by the CPU still. Yeah, we're not dipping down near as where we were before. Before we were dipping down to like 30 frames per second. Not anymore. I'm out of ammo, I'm gonna die. Oh my goodness. Yeah, much more stable frames per second. And we're pulling 105 watts. Interesting. Okay, should we go ahead and give Cyberpunk a try? Let's do it. Here we are in Cyberpunk, we've come Full circle, now rocking the 4070 Ti and dual channel RAM. And now we're getting 60 frames per second. These are the exact same settings, no ray tracing, no DLSS, no DLLA, 1440p, everything maxed. Before, we were getting 11 frames per second. Now, we are sitting right at between 59 and 64 frames per second. Okay, we're we dipped down into 40s, but still that's that is much better than 11 frames per second. And look at that, we're pulling 243 watts on the CPU. I mean the GPU, two, it went up to 255 watts on the GPU. That's why we needed the 850 watt power supply. This game is just sucking a ton of energy, but that means that it is utilizing the full power of that 4070 Ti. And if you're still sticking around for this part of the video, then I just want to say thank you so much. This was such a fun experience. 
Like, what happens if you put a 4070 Ti inside a tiny Alienware Aurora R5 to 2015? Well, here we are. This is such a fun experiment, and I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.